Dr. Tai, you mm-hmm. write a Bianchi sprint. Yes. How many Bianchi sprint does it take to buy a kidney from black market? <laughs> oh. A lot of us might not know. Apart from your heart and your lungs, kidney also play an important role when it comes to endurance sport. They are the ones regulating your water, your electrolytes, and also blood pressure. So you can imagine when you are out there cycling, doing your long rides, sweating profusely under our Malaysian lovely weather, your kidneys are the one working so hard behind the scene to maintain a balance to keep your body functioning so you can complete your ride safely. Sadly, a lot of times we take our body for granted. So if we don't do things to take care of kidney, we might end up damaging them. So on this topic, I'm going to interview a nephrologist who is also a cyclist to learn more about kidneys and cycling. Welcome to the other episode of Tear Us. In this series, I'll be interviewing different cyclists and asking questions that they want to know. So today, my guest is Dr. Tai. Hi, Dr. Tai. Hello. As a nephrologist, doctor, have you ever received patients that are being sent to emergency because of cycling related events? Yes, I do. Yeah, In fact, I do have a few patients who was admitted with uh, rhabdomyolysis, myelitis and most of them are because they have joined a spinning class. Their first class, they are overdoing it and the muscles can't take it. You have symptoms like a very severe thigh pain until you can't move. And then the other features will be blood in the urine. That's the one that usually will send the patients to the hospital. It's a serious medical condition that might result in death, right? Yes. If you don't treat rhabdomyolysis early, mm. definitely when you cause up the kidney, it will cause metabolic acidosis and eventually it will stop functioning. Mm. And uh, you probably end up with uh, you know, kidney failure and requiring that. I must say I've seen two cyclists who have mm. kidney failure. Mm. Young man. This guy looks really like a, you know, lean and always do long rides. Mm. Probably there's pain and everything. They probably take Celebrex, they probably take some painkiller. Oh, I have to admit I'm guilty of that. I whenever I have pain, I'll just take Celebrex like candies. <laughs> so I shouldn't do that. I should rectify so, where the pain comes from. <laughs> yeah, you should rest yeah. uh, not to take continuously the Celebrex. So, let's say AKI or ATN mm-hmm. is usually caused by two things either a toxic or a kidney perfusion mm-hmm. so let's say you have hypovolemia you can actually drop your blood pressure mm-hmm. I do have patients who come in who are on blood pressure taps and I went on cycling got the in the Janjaro fainted because the pressure was so low how would my body tell me when I'm going into dehydration while riding? Because for me, it's when my eyes start to smart, when sweat gets to my eyes, that I know that I need to drink water because sweat has been really concentrated. Well, there are other signs of that. She says that you need a bit more hydration, so increased thirst, or you have muscle cramps, or you're feeling fatigued, or loss of focus on your right. On top of that, actually, the most simple thing is basically looking at the color of the urine. I see. Uh, a normal color of the urine will be very light yellow, almost colorless. Mm-hmm. But if the color of the urine is very concentrated, that is a sign that shows that you know that you are actually dehydrated. And drinking too much water could be a problem as well. Yeah, sometimes you know, if we drink too much water during the rides, mm-hmm. and water toxicity can cause um, uh, serious complications like uh, hyponatremia. Mm-hmm. And of course, hyponatremia can lead on to complications like seizures and also loss of consciousness, coma. So hyponatremia is when body have having lesser amount of sodium, sodium. than where it's supposed mm-hmm. to be. So in order to prevent hyponatremia, probably just not more than a, a litre per hour. That also happen. depends on the weather ah, and the yes. terrain that you are doing. True. The other way yeah, to prevent that actually is to add on salt or sodium. So electrolyte drinks is always recommended. Mm-hmm. But what I do is I will drop a electrolyte effervescent into my second bottle of water whenever I want to go for a long ride. Just that it's very expensive. One tube, like 10 tablets, can cost easily around 30 to 50 ringgit. I want to ask, is the oral rehydration salt that we take while we are having diarrhea, <laughs> can we replace it with that? That yes. costs like 50 yes, cents yes. per sachet. <laughs> yeah, the only thing is that the oral rehydration salt is actually doesn't have uh, much flavour, not so palatable to take. It contains almost the same amount of uh, sodium and potassium as well as a bit of uh, glucose mm. as the tablets or even the 100 plus or gatorade. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So should we be looking out for the word isotonic? I guess it's better to look for something which is isotonic. Basically they have the same, almost the same osmolality as your blood. Can uh, absorb faster. faster. True. Uh-huh. How would you advise your patients who are 
having impaired kidney functions to take up cycling? Mm, it depends on, on what stages they are in. Mm. Um, if they are at the end of end stage, like uh, almost stage 5, which is preparing for dialysis, um, don't think that it's advisable. But if they are in the early stage of uh, chronic kidney disease, stage 3, stage 4, I don't see why not exercise mm. like walking, running or even cycling. Do they need to watch out a bit more carefully on you know, sweating profusely yeah. and yes. water consumption? Uh, some of these people are, tend to have um, retained fluid much faster mm. so you mm. will be very careful about hydration. Mm. Uh, having said that, if it's properly structured and uh, properly supervised, you, know, you can start with like, 30 minutes right and then can slowly increase it to one our right depends on how well they tolerate. Very rarely patients will just have kidney failure. Mm -hmm. They will always come with a package yes, with all the other true. things. Most of them will have diabetes or hypertension mm -hmm. and also high mm -hmm. cholesterol as well. So if you do cycling and that's improve your cardiovascular mm -hmm. cholesterol profile, mm -hmm. your sugar and even lowering the blood pressure. Okay, if, if somebody with a single kidney, basically they are just normal individual. They can function uh, like normal normal person. One kidney can do uh, the job of uh, two. Mm. So for this individual, I definitely encourage them to take up exercise like cycling. Mm. The other form of exercise that they try to avoid are those with body contact. You know, like uh, wrestling, boxing. I yeah. see. Mm. It's otherwise, more trauma from external. Yes, but otherwise there's no contraindication for them to to do cycling. Mm. Thank you Dr. Tai for your time today. The overall benefit of cycling, of course, it far outweighs the risk. So today we are talking about the risk and how do we mitigate the risk so that all of us can enjoy cycling better. Thank you for watching.